When you have the phone in my face like this, bro, the funny thing is, I don't even know his age because he lies about it. And I'm just thinking to myself, an animal call. Like, blah, blah, blah. I don't know what was going on. Okay. Oh, sorry. Yo, guys, make sure to hydrate. Welcome back to another video. That's much better, much better. Hello, my name is Ty Dent. If you're new to the channel, welcome. We are a small but mighty community over here. Today, we are staying inside. I have been outside in downtown in the gruesome streets struggling, making videos for you guys because I love you that much. It's a pretty dark and cloudy day. You know, one of those chill days where you just stay inside. You know, I'm not trying to be out there hustling and bustling. I live in the beautiful city of Miami. I want to share with you guys my crazy stories that I've either experienced or just heard around me living. What, what am I trying to say? The crazy stories that I heard living here in Miami. Oh, yeah, let's chill, let's chill, let's chill. Slow down, slow down. Bro, look at this. I have an apartment. Just look. Ah! Oh my god. I have a PC set up. PC set up looks nice. I got a dream board, the LEDs. I did pretty good. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I just, you know, it really hit me all at once that I'm actually, I'm a full grown adult. Like, I'm 22 years old, my own apartment, living in a major city by myself. I could have never guessed I would be here. I don't know. It's. It's kind of weird living in the moment. I'm trying to ground myself, sorry. So yeah, I'm sorry, let's get into the video. With Miami being possibly the craziest city on earth, I've gone through experiences that's probably fucked me up for the rest of my life, but hey, that's living in Miami. And some of you are probably gonna think, no way that happened, you're lying, you're making that shit up. I promise you, every single one of these stories are absolutely, positively, spiritually, yeah, it's true. Most of Miami is pretty chill. You know, if you go to like Little Havana or just outside of downtown. But the closer you get to downtown or Brooklyn, or, you know, just the city itself, that's when it gets real crazy. So I live what I call the heart of downtown, meaning, you know, this is the trenches, this is the real side. You know, of course, you know, you have Brooklyn. Brooklyn's for the babies. That's where all those fancy aristocrats, you know, they have their money. Of course, living over here, a lot of people. They're coming from all different socially economic backgrounds. Some people that's rich, some people that's poor, and then some people that's homeless. This story includes one homeless man out there in the downtown streets, living it up, living by himself. Here I am. Um, I don't know what I was doing. I think I was just out, you know, enjoying my day, you know, enjoying the Miami sun, as people do out here. Here I am walking, just mind my business, and I hear police sirens, you know, woo, 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 like a bunch of them, like just whizzing past me. First, I wasn't really surprised just because it's probably bad, but that's constantly police sirens, you know, car, car wrecks, car horns, constantly, all the time. So, you know, me hearing police sirens, I didn't really take any notice to it. I started getting closer to a crowd and then I started to hear yelling. It, it wasn't really English, it was more like an animal call. Like, blah, blah, blah. I don't know what was going on. And all of a sudden I hear, you know, the cop, get down now. And I'm just thinking to myself, am I about to be a witness to a murder documentary? Like, what is going on here? Like, I'm not trying to be part of the craziness. I'm just trying to like witness from a side, from afar. I start walking faster. I see a guy and it's not just a guy, you know, well, it is just a guy, but he had no clothes on. And not only that, he was taking a full shower outside in the broad daylight. It's like 3 p.m. You know, if it was nighttime, maybe I let it slide, but the kids are out. What is this dude doing butt ass naked, taking a shower under like a, a terrence or I don't even know what to call it, it was like the roof. He was like under the roof and the water was dripping on him. He was taking a shower. He had no soap, so I don't know what was going on. He was butt, butt ass naked. Now you might be like, oh, that's funny. That's, uh -huh. but I'm not gonna lie. That shit traumatized me. I had to see a older homeless guy and see everything. You know, I didn't want to see everything. I was just trying to get home and see nothing. You know, I, it, it was, it was a sight to remember. Pause. I still see the guy under the terrace, cops have got the gun out or a taser. Get down! And he's just yelling, rah, rah. and I, I'm like, this is Miami. This is, it is everything that everybody says it is. <laughs> Hold on, I need some water. I need water. The second story, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, it's a bit, it's a bit of a downer. It's pretty sad. So this story does involve death. Yeah, yeah don't get afraid, don't get afraid. Uh, well, it is sad. Let's just get into it. Okay, let me actually move over because I need to, I want to, I want to relax for this one. This story here doesn't connect to me. Um, so it was told to me by a, at the time, coworker. I believe this happened maybe three, four months ago. Time goes on and eventually coworkers come and we start chatting. But eventually one of the guys started talking about a story that they actually encountered themselves. Yeah, man, I was out in Brickell just riding my bike and then I started smelling a weird smell. You know, he couldn't really 
particular, the smell, it smelled just like, like dying meat. But it was so much in the air, he knew it wasn't like dog poop. He didn't know what it was. And there's no, we're in the middle of the city. There's no live animals or livestock that's gonna be walking around. So what is that smell? Then he got closer. I tend not to get riled up or feel like sad or disgusted by a lot of things, but this was a little disclaimer for those who are a little, you know, sensitive to death my guy said he pulled up and the first thing that he saw picture this i'm trying to put you in a scenario you're in the middle of the city you know there's buildings everywhere cars everywhere normal day bright sunny day it's like 3 p.m right you see blood splatted everywhere police sirens it smells like something just died something did die oh my goodness someone's head fully off their body just in the street a full like human skull in the street and then the rest of their body was pulled apart and you just see like their blood and guts, you know, spilled all, all over the floor, all over the pavement. You're so confused what the hell happened. Now all of a sudden the police comes up. Yo, what's going on? Sorry, this place is blocked off. Um, this guy just committed, you know, he just uh, committed deletion. I'm trying to keep it safe for YouTube. So apparently the guy decided to, you know, remove himself from the world by jumping out of the top floor of his building. And it was a pretty sad, story and i forgot what the reason was i think it had to do with either his wife or he was unhappy or something i don't i forget the complete story but it literally happened like five minutes away from where i was working at and it happened like a week prior i didn't even know so it was just like holy shit like this could happen to anybody like, you know delete self deletion is real mental health all this is real like yo this is crazy like, someone actually did that i've never met anybody that's actually you know, went all the way with it. You know, I heard people that talk about it or whatever. And to know that it happened literally right across the street from me, it's, oh my God. And then like he said the scene, blood was everywhere. His brain, oh my God, his brain was like out. You saw the inside of his body, it was like split open. It was crazy. Send all my condolences to that family. They all received this somehow. So moving on to a brighter note. My next story here is more personal to me because I've actually, I was the one that found out about this person. The guy's really a character, you know? He's a character, you know? He doesn't even realize how bad it looks, you know? If he does see this, get help. Mental therapy is real. I'm not even saying that to be funny. It's serious, like, yo, get therapy. My next story is on the biggest F-boy on earth. Oh my goodness. I know there's a lot of guys out there that think, oh yeah, I'm a fuck boy, I get girls. No, no. No, this guy is on a completely different level. He literally cares about nothing but getting the next girl. I'm serious. And this guy is like, uh, oh. <laughs> Bro, the funny thing is, I don't even know his age because he lies about it. His age changed like six times. First he was 28, then he was 31, then he said he was 42. What? What? I, I'm fresh in the city. You know, I'm just trying to get a brand. I'm just trying to get a brand new job. My first job in the city. Hey, man, what's going on, man? My name is. I almost said his name. What's going on, man? My name is Ty. I'm your regional manager. What's your name? Uh, my name's Ty. Yeah, man. We're gonna just have a good, fantastic day, man. Where's that? Where's that attitude, man? Come on, man. Let's get it, man. What's your name? You're, you're Jerry. You're Jerry, right? Come on, man. Keep in mind, this dude is 30 plus. I still don't know. 30, at least 30 plus years old. What the fuck? And the funny thing is, he always used to confess to me how. He was upset that nobody liked him or he felt that everybody was hating on him. When in reality, bro, you're just fucking annoying. When I open in the morning at 4 a.m., the first thing I don't want to hear is, hey man, what's going on guys? What's going on? You guys good? I don't want to hear that. Guys, when I say he's screaming this every day, all day, constantly, it's so annoying. That's being happy and that's being a little too happy. <laughs> Speaking of being a little bit too happy, <laughs> I, I think the guy, you know, he might be on that side, which is fine. I'm not even, I don't even hate it. The fucked up part is, he was like so against it. Oh, it's so wrong, they shouldn't be doing this. Oh, I would never, when in reality, I think he would, I think he's the brand, I think he's the brand ambassador. You know, I think he's doing it. Especially because one of my other coworkers, so this job was all, my last job was just, oh, it was a circus, it was a fucking circus. One day, you know, one of my coworkers, he was a cool guy, he actually got fired for some BS. He, one day, went to go talk to our regional manager at the time, and he caught him on some, some weird website, and he couldn't explain it. You know, he couldn't explain to me what it was. Yo, you know, what are you looking at? What is that? Tom had the audacity to say, Yo, man, this, man, this is cool stuff here, man. I'm, I'm definitely, you know, I'm definitely, I'm definitely gonna go to this, man. Yeah, yeah, for sure. What he was viewing was BDSM. But oh, no, no, no. Not for, you know, tying up women and, you know, 
do what they do. He was the one that was gonna be tied up and ball gagged. <laughs> I'm cool with people being, you know, on that side of the fence. You know, I don't have nothing against it. When you're a guy that's so against it, you're so vocal about it. Oh, this is so wrong. I don't like it. Oh, you know, I don't like guys. Ooh, ooh, it's not me. Literally, he's doing all. He's doing. Ooh, I don't. Whatever. He's, he's doing all of that type of stuff. When you start to really break it down and look at the actions that you're doing, you know, the comments that you make. This is the same guy that's recording me saying, oh, sh Ty, you should model for our company. Oh, you look so good. And going to my roommate and telling him he has a tiny, nice little waist. What? <laughs> what the fuck is going on? Huh? I'm sorry. I, like I said, I'm all for, you know, male improvement. Guys, we should, we should boost each other up. But I have never in my life I went to another man and said, you have a nice tiny little waist. But it only gets worse from there. So this guy, not only is he's a liar about his age because of suspicious reasons. A little sexual, you know, BDSM, but to yourself. He was looking up getting walked on the leash by a, like a dog and he apparently he wanted to do that too. Yeah. When you have the phone in my face like this, you know, pointing at me saying, Ty, oh my God, you look so good right now. You need to model for our company. Mm. And then telling my roommate he's a nice little waist. You know, that's when it starts pushing the line. I don't know. We were new to the city. We didn't have any friends. We didn't know anywhere to go, anywhere to see. So having someone that, you know, that's lived here for, I think at that point, five years or six years to show us around the city was a nice experience. Eventually, after, you know, getting to know him a bit, you know, better, and I came to find out that he's actually just a piece of shit. I'm not gonna lie to you, piece of shit. He's the kind of guy where everybody wishes they could be in life. He's young, well, I don't know, I don't know how old he is. You know, you're making six figures, apparently. You're in shape, you know, you got your stuff together. You're living your life in Miami, you know, you're doing your thing. You have a girl by your side that's from a small town. She's in Miami with you, not in the streets, not in the club, cooking for you every night, always making sure you're okay. You know, you have a dream life. You know, this is this is the life every guy wishes they could live. Being the fuck boy he is, he just he can't he can't control himself. He has to continue to play that game. This guy on a numerous occasions has told us, told me and Jerry, how much kitty he needs and how much he enjoys and how much he just he can't live without it. We're leaving a party. He's in the Uber, literally like doing this, screaming, man, I love kitty man. I need my kitty man. Keep in mind, this is a 30 year old full grown man. At this time, I was only 20 years old. I'm just sitting here like, what? Is he having an emotional breakdown because he needs more kitty? Because they had to go to school. They had to go, wait, wait, college, 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 whoa. They went back to college. School sounded crazy, sorry. And the guy is literally having a, an emotional breakdown because we didn't get him. And I'm just like, yo, this is my regional manager. He's a full grown man. Are, is this how men act in Miami? What the, What is happening? He would tell me how many times he'll cheat and how he'll feel bad, but keep doing it. And doesn't he doesn't know why. I don't know why, I just feel so bad inside. I, I love her, but I just need more kitty. I don't know why, I just, I don't get it. I, I'm confused. So Tom, simple. Just don't cheat anymore. Yeah, man, you're right, man. I'm, I'm not gonna do that. Well, actually, ah, I did have a trip planned this weekend and I was gonna go to Argentina to go fuck six different girls the same week. Okay, well, just be safe. I know I've been counting you, man. Thanks, bro. This guy went to Argentina to go f have sex with six different women he did not even know does anybody else just plan a trip to who knows where to try to hook up with girls but don't have a plan don't have you don't know where you're living you don't have, nothing he just i'm gonna go i'm gonna go this weekend let's go and it's like a friday we're going tomorrow to do what to try to sleep with women what most see for most men most guys aren't doing stuff like this but like i said this has got to be the biggest fuck boy i've ever met in my life fucking six different girls in a week what and then just coming back home and then Doing it all over again. <laughs> oh, I remember I was at one party with him. I remember his boss is right there in front of him. And there's a girl that he wants to talk to, but she works in a company with us. So I literally tell him, yo, do not do it. Your boss is right there. You could lose your entire life. Keep in mind, this guy was a regional manager. So apparently he's making, you know, six figures. You know, he's been there for a minute. And I was really trying to explain like, you don't want to lose it all for this one girl that, why? And I think she's 19, you're 30, bro. What are you doing? You won't even believe what this guy said to me. And I quote, the guy looks at me, turns to me and says, Ty, I don't care. And ran off. I literally sat there 
speechless. That was when I realized I had to cut this guy. This guy, he would throw his whole life away for some, some kitty. He will. I literally said, bro, you will lose your life. You'll lose your girl. You're going to lose your job. You're going to lose your house. Everything. He looks at me and says, I don't care. Oh, that is a forsaken man. Good luck. No, you've done bad things. We're gonna just move on before I say something that I shouldn't say on camera. All right, last story. I wanna end the video off on a story that I went through. And for a lot of you guys that's been keeping up with the channel, you would already know that, you know, I went homeless and whatever. But for a lot of you guys that's new, I do wanna tell the story on what I went through, you know, how I got through homelessness and what it really taught me, you know, because going, going homeless was, one of the hardest things that I had to go through, but you know, I will always remain humble at this point. Like I know how bad it, I know what it feels like to have nothing and to get through that. So I don't need millions and a Lambo to feel good about myself. I feel good right here. Making this video, I feel good. Of course, I want to be financially free. Like having no money feels like shit, but I don't need millions, you know? Enough money is where I can do this full time. So let's talk about it. Um, I moved here to Miami about two years ago. When I first got here, uh, it was pretty, hard. The plan originally actually was that me and a group of friends were coming. It was gonna be me, you guys know Jerry, a guy from my hometown named Devin, and Dylan. Time got closer to actually moving and putting those steps into motion and actually making it a reality, like moving to Miami on our own, doing it by ourselves, we don't have anybody's help, no parents. They step back. And I get it, you know, it's a scary thing. You know, obviously, you know, we went homeless at the time. At that point, I get it, anything could have happened. I don't blame anybody, but Jerry did come with me um, and we came out here together. So we worked jobs for a year, I would, not a year, maybe like seven months. Seven months, I would say. And we saved as much as we could. I believe I saved around 7,000, Jerry saved around seven or eight also. I decided to rent Airbnb for like, I believe, I think I did it for a month. I don't think I ever mentioned Dave's Place on the channel. Dave's Place is a very special place. Um, Dave's Place is the first place me and Jerry actually went to when we moved here um, because that was the first Airbnb place. I don't know, it, was, it just seems so far away now. You know, when I first got there, I still remember seeing the outside and thinking, yo, what the fuck, did we fuck up? Are we in the hood? And then like you get inside, it was a pretty nice place. After that month, you know, we were looking for jobs, you know, constantly on the job search. But we didn't realize here in the big city, jobs come, but they also go. You know, time's up, you know, the month goes by. Luckily, we still had a lot of money saved up. We actually moved to Brickell. I think we moved to like a top floor, penthouse, luxury something. I think I have pictures of that. The fucking sunrise in this apartment, holy cow. Oh, and I miss it sometimes, I'm not gonna lie. Now, keep in mind, we don't have any income coming in and we're just spending money. You know, we're trying to eat, we have to pay for parking. We're, pay, we're, pay, we're, we're, we're putting out and not getting anything in. Around this time, that's when we started getting low on money. I believe we had a combined maybe 5K left. So then we had to get our third place. This is the place where I actually started making videos and started getting back on my channel because during that time, I was in a very low space. I wasn't happy. I was constantly on the move and out of the blue randomly you know when we got the third place we were just sitting there confused because we we're out of, we we're pretty much low on money this time finally we get a job interview we get a message back um days go by we go to the interview blah blah, blah do our thing we don't get a response back for another guess it just guess it guess how long it took we didn't get another response for another month now you're probably thinking ty where's the homeless part of this story like sounds like you got a you, you got this place you found out the job well, at this point, when we got the job, we were actually pretty much completely out of money. Apartments start around 2K rent, and you need around three times the rent to just move in, and then you need the security deposit, and this deposit, and this, and this, and this, and this, and this, and this. And this. So we really needed like $10,000. We're not gonna be able to get an apartment because we have to get, we have to make money first. We have to work for at least a month or two to get, you know, an apartment. We decided the only thing we can do is go to work every day like nothing's happening, work our asses off, and just live in our cars. And that's what we did. I The channel was in a very different place. It was filled with a lot of negative emotions. You know, it was a very different time for me. Not only do you have nowhere to live, nowhere to put your head down, nowhere to relax. You know, at all times, people are looking in your car, seeing like, oh, is that guy living in his car? Like, ooh, is he okay? We are doing this all in Brickell. As I said before, Brickell was the financial district, which means all the rich aristocratical people that's, oh, you're not, be you're better than me, huh? No, you're not. Like, they just 
judging the fuck out of you. It was to the point where I was having mental breakdowns. I had no emotions. I couldn't feel, I couldn't think. It was a pretty low time for me. I remember one time Jerry told me this story where he woke up in the morning and you know, he has to get to work. You know, you're still going to work at 4 a.m. in the morning. If anybody ever calls me lucky or you don't deserve it, fuck you. Bro, I went through some shit. Oh, you have no idea. But Jerry was telling me the story where he was waking up at 4 a.m. and he had to brush his teeth. And there's no running faucets, we don't have water. So what we have to do is we have to use water bottles. We're filling the water bottles up from work, bringing them with us, drinking on those, and also using it as toothpaste, like toothpaste water. So you'll get to put the toothpaste and pour the bottle on top of the you know brush to brush your teeth. Jerry told me that one time he was doing it and he didn't realize, but it was this couple just watching him do it. And he literally told me he just broke down. He just felt worthless. And that hit me so hard. As a kid, you never think, you, you never think it's gonna be me you know, being homeless. It wouldn't be me being broke. It wouldn't be me, whatever bad situation. When in reality, it can happen to anybody. There were some nights where I would be up to like 3 a.m. and not even realize it was 3 a.m. All time was the same because there was no home. There was no, let me go sleep in. Let me go relax. No, it's just I'm outside and that's it. How do I get out of this? That's all I was thinking. How do I get out of this? Man, I just feel like I've been on a roll lately. I don't know, it's like the more I do this, the funner it gets. And that was a big fear of mine that the more like consistent I be or the more videos I push out, I was gonna get that YouTube burnout, but it hasn't happened. I don't know, like for the first time in ever, I believe, I'm like pushing three videos a week and I'm not getting burnt out. But there you have it guys. That is my crazy Miami stories, you know. Um, I definitely have more if you guys do wanna hear them. Um, just let me know in the comments like or like the video. Let me see some good engagement on the video. If I see you guys supporting the video, then I know. Let me come out with a part two. Because Miami, honestly, just living here on a day-to-day -day basis, you're gonna just have stories piling up. Oh my God, I remember that was this one guy that was in high heels. I don't know, and this one guy was throwing ass in the middle of the street. Listen to music, he actually does it every day. And this, and this other time, this tick, he was an NBC TikToker, he was just scratching at people. I, I don't, bro, tell, I tell you, it's every single day. But I miss that 2016 YouTube where, you know, it just felt like authentic content. You know, nobody was, trying to sell a course or trying to get you on something. I just miss that old, the love for the art, the love of just making a video for the people. I grew up watching people that influenced me to be, you know, a certain way, be better, be better to myself. And to see how YouTube's ending up, you know, the Mr. The Mr. Beastification of YouTube, the red pilling of YouTube, all this random stuff, this nonsense. You know, just seeing YouTube become such a business and not what it's meant to be, you know, it's in the name, you. YouTube, it's supposed to be about you, not, you know, trying to get billion dollars, you know, just about you. So I missed that, which is why I hopped on the platform. I'm here to take it over. I'm here to be the next big YouTuber, you know, I'm saying it now. Um, at first I was kind of scared to say it, but seeing the way YouTube is, yeah, I'm taking this shit over. Um, I do have some updates that I want to talk about later, but I'm not 100% on it yet, so I don't want to speak on it, but I am going to be making some changes to the channel. We're going to speak about that later, but see you guys in the next video. Love you so much. Peace. Be a good person and go love thy neighbor.